test of where this product actually works is to see it in the field, see it operating. And to see it operating, what better way than to speak to John Alfonso of the Croydon Service Centre and get his first-hand experience in using what many are saying. Smart Fuel is to date the most advanced and innovative fuel station management system available. Let's get John's perspective on this. My own perspective being uh, the retailer that sort of helped with most of the de development of the Smart Fuel system uh, after the first version came out. Um, my site being a site with about 45% uh, data sales, uh, I had a problem when we bought the site and we decided that in order to get a better cash flow situation we had to control the debtors very very well and I wanted to do this without also having the site and uh, the problems of debtors taking over my life totally. So together with Smart Fuel uh, we worked on some ideas and reports uh, that I felt were very necessary to help us control this, this situation. 45% um, of debtor sales, uh, most people wouldn't even touch a site like that. But in my situation, we've turned it around by using the, the smart fuel system as the debtor management tool. And also to control stock uh, losses, not only on the fuel side, but on the shop side. And uh, also managing the, the tanks and the dips with the system and thereby giving me a lot more time for myself. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of the features are actually designed for you in, in the smart fuel system. Yes, a lot of the, the features were designed specifically for me. Um, like I say, having such a big debt as a book, uh, I, I needed some special control and I wanted it without taking up all of my time. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically speak a bit of how I manage my site and this huge debtors book um, and now I've turned it around where my debtors book is just about as good as cash at this moment um, which is great for me and great for business at this stage. What I'm going to do is uh, go through each part of the, uh, the, the, the system, basically the stock, the debtors and then a tenant manager because I've also found that by looking after the staff and acknowledging that they are the interface with the customer. Um, I've been able to increase sales on, on that side as well, and increase service levels in fact, because the staff know that I know exactly what each one of them is doing. We'll start on the system with the uh, attendant manager. What I use here is each week when I do wages, I use a report on the system called attendant productivity. And I basically print a report exactly matching my pay week, which in my case is from a Thursday to a Wednesday. This report gives you very good productivity data in that it gives you the liters that each attendant is pumped, the RAN value as well as the sales count, uh, which is basically the amount of serves that attendant has done. And then separately it also does his oil and dry sales, so you know who is sitting back and who is actually running. And you can use this to analyze who, who are the guys who are actually trying to perform and the guys who are just working to take their, their pay home on a, on a Friday. Mm, I see. What I do here is I uh, look at the, the total liters a guy's pumped and uh, the amount of serves as well. Because what, uh, what we found in the beginning, when we were looking just at liters, we were finding that there were certain guys always doing the big volumes. And when we looked into the uh, sales count, the actual amount of serves is very low. So obviously the guy was spending his day at, at the diesel pump, which on my specific site is a big, big salad. Diesel accounts for more than a third of our sales. So all this guy had to do there was stand there and fill a couple of trucks with two or three hundred liters at a time and he would be number one. So what we did was we built into the system the actual number of serves that the guy did. 
So you can balance it all out. The liters that the guys pump, the value of the, the sales, and how many cars are actually served. And there you can see the guy, you'll have a guy who actually did a very low rand value or liter volume, but he served twice as many vehicles compared to the guy at the diesel pump. Mm. So that eliminated that problem. And the guys obviously got caught out in that way. And uh, that has helped to spread the workload now. Everybody tries to do their bit now to become one of the top three and get a bit of a bonus. Great. And uh, that improved productivity by an enormous amount. And like I say, uh, it's a weekly thing. So by, by making yourself as the manager or owner of the site look at the thing, you also know who your staff are and then you know what to do at the end of the year when it comes to bonus time. Things like that, uh, and who, who the guys are who you can see are going to make it as maybe a cashier, or you, know, you need to promote somebody to something, or move them into a shop, or a more responsible position. By having this, after a couple of months, you know who your good guys are and who, and who are the ones who are not pulling. Great. So that is one of the features that I use every week. That has made quite a difference. And it's, it's also motivated the staff a bit more. Um, we do pay a bonus every week. And we do two separate bonuses, one for the forecourt, which is for fuel sales. And we do a separate one for oil sales as well. And it uh, works great. The, the guys know that they are being watched. And they also know that there's something in it for them. Uh, it stirred up competition on the forecourt, which is good for business and good for the customer. Yeah, it shows in the way that the guys serve the customers as well. They're very, very energetic. Yes. Right, now we'll go to the big bone of contention, which is the debtors, which I know most dealers are very scared of. And I know that uh, guys who run big debtors books almost never have money in the bank. What uh, I did when we bought the business and started the smart fuel system, within the first month that I was here, I realized that we were going to be in trouble very soon if I did not turn the debtors book around, uh, which the previous dealer had. And he was in a nice situation, having had the site for 30 years. So carrying a big debtors book wasn't too much of a problem for him. But in my case, being new on the site and needing every cent of capital, uh, it was a big problem for me. Mm, I see. So, we decided we had to control it very strictly. Now, most site owners, and even myself when we did this, were, seemed to be scared to tell the customer that, sorry, I cannot sell fuel to you on credit. And it basically boiled down to a case of educating the account customer. Most of them take it for granted that when they give you a deposit, you are sitting with their money and you earning interest on it in a separate bank account or whatever. And the first thing you got to do as a site owner is let your customer know that it is not strict. In strict, strictly speaking, it is not a deposit. It is a prepaid fuel account. Exactly like you pay for prepaid airtime. Your customer is giving you, for example, 10,000 rand to buy him 10,000 rands worth of fuel, and you are effectively stocking it for him in your tank. He has already bought that fuel. And when he has used that 10,000 rands worth of fuel, he now has to pay for the next lot of fuel again. And that is basically how I run my debtor's book. I do not call it a fuel deposit anymore. It is now a prepaid fuel account. Like I said, the customers have to be, unfortunately, they have to be re-educated on this because all the years before, this is how it was done. And that, that was a, a big uh, thorn in my side, getting the, the customers to know this. But with good marketing, showing them what you can offer them with this system, it really turned out to be 
the best thing that I ever did. Yes, I did lose two or three customers, but believe me, those three customers, my competition can have with pleasure. As far as the rest of them went, within three or four months, I turned the debtors book around, and now after three years with the system, I do not have one debtor without a fully prepaid account. Very seldom do debtors actually go over their prepaid limit. The only people who maybe do will be the weekly paying customers, and that would only be because I only print statements on a Monday morning. And uh, yes, at the moment I'm sitting with about 550,000 rand in prepaid deposits. And now, uh, once again, I have to stress that that is not money that I have got one side. It is operating capital that I've put into the tax. And you have to understand here yeah, that why you have to apply the limit, the customer's limit on his account. Is I don't have to tell you as a dealer that you're paying cash for a tanker load of fuel. Another thing we did was big customers, obviously, they're running a business just like we are, cannot fork out hundreds of thousands of rands on fuel deposits, and they are big, big customers who do pump those kind of volumes. So what we do is we offer them a weekly or a fortnightly account, which then helps my cash flow as well as the customers. Yes, he has the inconvenience of having to make a check or a payment on a weekly basis, but it is still better than trying to give 30 drivers 100 rand petty cash every day for fuel. On top of that, I physically went to see all the customers and actually showed them what they are getting as an added value to their account. We obviously don't charge for all these extra reports and things, but the customer can then see that he is in control of his account and also that I, as his service provider, am in control of his account. What I do when I go and see these customers, uh, especially when I have to go and ask for more money with fuel price increases and whatever, is I just go and I see the person who's in charge of the fleet. It, he's usually the best person to speak to. And I basically go there and just remind them about what we are actually doing for them and uh, any new features that are on the system and what is now even more available to them. And uh, out of all the customers that I go and see, I really have no problem increasing deposits. And like I've said before, the customer who does not want to do that, I can tell you now he cannot afford to do that and he's a customer you don't need. Send him to the competition down the road. With the latest version of the system that we've uh, developed a few extra things that Smart Fuel has kindly done for me, um, I have approximately 700 vehicles on our system, all tagged obviously, and uh, we needed some extra controls because of, uh, as you know, you always need to keep one step ahead of the clever criminal mind that seems to operate in on all our forecourts. Right. What I've done is uh, I've actually made up an email communication for my customers, which I then email to them and just show, show them the features that are now available. These extra features at the moment are with a tag, you now can put in a description of the vehicle you can say it's a 1400 Nissan white LDV. You can apply a limit to that specific vehicle, which a few of my customers have reps who get a fuel allowance, which will then limit that vehicle to whatever the customer specifies. Uh, if, he has, if this rep gets 2,000 rand a month, his specific tag will actually stop the pump when it gets to 2,000 rand, while the rest of the account remains operative and all other vehicles will still get fuel. At least then the guy knows he's used his 2,000 rand allowance and from here till the end of the month he has to pay for his own fuel. You can also specify some customers even though they're using the tag still require that we use an order and an order number. 
uh, when you specify this on the vehicle, the cashier cannot ring up this transaction without punching an order number. As well as uh, consumption report putting in ODO readings. And a great new feature on this is that the system looks at the last ODO reading at the last fill that was done. And if it's not within the parameter you put in, it actually warns the cashier so he knows he can tell the, the attendant to go back and recheck the odometer reading before he punches it in and everything's wrong and throws the consumption reports out. You can now also specify the fuel grade. No more putting petrol into a diesel car or diesel into a petrol car. And then you can actually specify the average consumption that this vehicle should be giving the customer and what variance the, this vehicle should then be operating outside of this consumption figure. And this then, on the consumption report you give to your customer, highlights this vehicle if it goes without, if it goes out of the parameter that you've actually put in. These parameters, of course, your customer must give to you. Then we added some more things on, and these would be tank capacity for each vehicle. Uh, we, we had cases of 1400 Nissan LDVs used taking 60, 65 liters of fuel. And uh, we all know that those only have 42, 40, 45 liter tanks. So now you can actually put in the capacity of that vehicle. And when the pump actually gets to 45 liters, if the vehicle takes, uh, can take 45 liters, it will physically stop at the specified tank capacity. Hmm. So if they do have a drum on the back of the bucky for the lawnmower at home or the jet ski or the wife's car, uh, unfortunately we won't be able to proceed with that transaction because the pump will actually stop and say sorry this car is now full. You can actually also now set the hours between fills which uh, the customers also love especially guys who run big fleets like courier companies and they they know that a vehicle should only be filling once a day. So we actually set the the limit at once every 24 hours or once every 48 hours or whatever the customer specifies and once a vehicle has been filled in that time the tag will not be able to start a pump until 24 hours has elapsed. Again there you can also specify which days the tag can be used Monday to Sunday and most companies are not open Saturday Sunday so you simply just take off the ticks for Saturday and Sunday and if somebody does take a chance and try and put fuel the tag will be rejected and it will just say that the uh, Saturday full or Sunday full